Today we talk about FUBA, a game about soccer. This is the second game that I play in my life about soccer. Last year I played soccer, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Now is the time for another one, FUBA. It's funny that I play games about soccer because I'm really not a big soccer fan, which is unusual for Italian people, such as myself. Uh, I just get interested in soccer once every four years so during the World Cup, then I become a rabid soccer werewolf like every other Italian, but that's but otherwise I don't I don't watch it, I'm not interested in it. But I have to say that games about soccer are pretty fun. I enjoyed soccer last year and definitely enjoyed this game too. Even though this one took a little bit to get into, and I'll explain why that may happen to you too. Uh, talking about the components, I want to talk a little bit about them, which I don't always do, because there are a couple of unusual things in this game. First, the game comes in a tube such as this one. Very cool looking, but a pain to store uh, in your on your game shelf. I'm sure that you realize why. The game uh, has a board that is made of rubber. Look at that, the field is made of rubber and that is great actually because it doesn't uh, slip much on the floor or table. I'm pushing it and it really does not move much um, and it's very durable. It just looks nice. Then you have players that are absolutely represented by wooden t-shirts pretty much and then we have uh, three referees which are used one of them to keep track of the time so you place that on the time track and then you have two other referees that are used to keep track of score on the goal tracks you also have a ball which is represented by a spherical six sided die I should say six values die the number that will be on top of the ball is the number that is used to represent control of the ball during the game the lower the number on the ball the better the control that you have one is excellent you are controlling the ball like it's part of your body six is more like the ball is bouncing incontrollably around your body and you have no idea what the heck is going on the dice is spherical, there is a weight in it, uh, so that you make sure that it really doesn't roll too much. But that I also find a little annoying, because it means that when you're moving to a new value, you kind of like have to make sure that the weight moves. Sometimes you have to do a little bit like this, shake it a little bit, uh, to make sure that the value doesn't move too much. Uh, and then the die, the, the die, the ball can move a little bit uncontrollably like that on the field. Um, I think at some point I'll just replace it with a regular six-sided die, clearly less thematic but much more practical. The game, uh, the board is divided in areas and as you probably can imagine from what you see here, this is a pretty abstract simulation, if simulation is even the word. Um, not uh, super detailed but, um, well, I'll tell a little bit later about this, but the procedures do capture the feel of the game. Even though, again, um, it, it feels overall abstract, yet somehow the theme does emerge. What you get with the game is also two sets of formation cards at the beginning of the game, each player chooses a formation uh, that will determine the players that are committed to defense, middle field and forward positions and the formation that they secretly select at the beginning by each player will regulate the movement of the players in that team. You also get a red card which has no strict practical uses, it's just for fun, just to shove it in the opponent's Face when he gets a red card. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, don't do it like this, otherwise the opponent will probably punch in the face, which will get him another red card. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, you know what I mean. Roll book. Uh, 11 pages and a player raid at the end. 
The book feels pretty legalistic. It's just a list of rules and procedures. It feels heavier than it should be and it makes the game sound more complicated than it is. I hope that this review actually will not sound too absurd when I start going through the procedures. Um, the game is not hard but it does take a little bit to get used to the procedures, to memorize things and then another further step uh, to make the game feel natural so that you play the game following the flow of the action rather than going through the procedures. Procedures. There are also two dice, each player uses a die. I think it would have been nice to have a red one and a blue one since those are the colors of the team. Not a big deal if, of course, if that's what you want, you can easily replace the dice that come with the set with your own dice. Now, each team uh, at the beginning of a, of a turn will have to roll a die and to make selections. Uh, also, the teams will be defined as the controlling team, the one that has the ball, and the passive team, the one that doesn't have the ball and is trying to get it. Now, beginning of a turn, and here I'll follow the play raid to make sure that I don't skip any step um, and to keep things tidy and clean. At the beginning of each turn, each uh, the controlling team decides the target area where the ball is going to go, where that team is trying to uh, get the ball to go. Then both players roll the dice. And here, for example, suppose that we have a 5 and a 1. The difference between the two dice determine how, determines how much time is passing, how many minutes. In this case we have f four minutes, one, two, three, four, and we simply move the time marker along that track by that amount of minutes. Then we have the control check in which uh, the controlling player needs to see uh, whether or not he's able to retain the ball. And uh, it's done in a simple way, which is pretty much by, uh, by comparing the result that has been rolled, suppose that the control team rolled a 5, to comparing the number that that team has, has rolled with the control number on the die after modifiers have been applied. Modifiers will come from the number of players for each team in the starting area. For example, the start area, the one where you are when you're throwing the ball, the one from which you're throwing the ball, um, that's the start area. You get a plus one if the controlling team has more players in the start area than the opponent, plus two if it's twice as many, minus one if the passive team has more players in the starting area, Minus two, this passing player has twice as many players in the start area or more. The same applies to the target area. Plus one or plus two if you have more players than the opponent when you are the controlling player. Minus one or minus two if you have um, half of the passive team there. Half players, uh, number that the passive team has there. That means that ideally you are uh, kicking the ball from an area where you have a lot of players and the opponent doesn't have many to an area where the opponent doesn't have many players. And there is also a penalty based on distance. You may also try to uh, kick the ball in an area where no one has players, but you have uh, one of your players that is Jason there. And if you still control the ball at the end of the kick, then uh, good for you, you can move one of your players into the uh, area that doesn't have any players. So pretty much a coordinated action. Coordinated action. The player, one player is kicking the ball as that player is running to an empty area. That is the good stuff that happens, of course, if you retain control of the ball. That is, if your modified roll uh, after the modifiers have been taken into account is higher than the value on the ball. If it is lower, then you lose control of the ball and the opponent becomes the active player, the controlling player, you become the passive player. What if it is the same result after modifiers have been taken into account? Then a special event happens, you roll a die, you compare the result with the options that are listed in this table here and you simply apply the special event. This really spices things up. It makes, it may make things, uh, it may make things a little more unpredictable. Uh, there are also extra procedures that you need to take into account in some of these situations. For example, when, when a free kick needs to be uh, performed, things like that. 
but you have that moment of unpredictability there. When the ball moves, you also change the value on the ball. The value becomes the new number that was rolled. In this case, for example, it would be 5. Again, if this is um, the controlling team and the controlling team retains control, 5. Uh, however, if the start area and or the target area do not contain any players of the opponent, then the value of the ball is reduced by 1. In this case, it would be 5 minus 1 is 4. If this was kicked from an area that doesn't have any, any players of the opponent or into an area that doesn't have any players of the opponent. After the ball moves, the controlling player gets a chance to try to get a goal in, which is uh, pretty similar in, in essence to the procedure that you have for controlling. That is, you simply um, roll a die, you have to roll another die, you take modifiers into account, a huge modifier of course is in the position where you are when you're trying to get the ball in, other modifiers apply. And if the uh, modify result that you just rolled exceeds the current value on the ball, the current control value of the ball, then you score the goal, yay, good for you. You don't have to attempt a ball uh, uh, to, to get a goal in. You can try to kick uh, the ball into uh, the goal area and score a goal even if the situation is pretty impossible. That is, if the uh, die roll would need to be more than six, if you need to beat a six. In that case, you roll a die. If you score a six, uh, good for you, then you roll a die again. And if you score another six, you have put the ball in and you scored a goal even if it was completely impossible. I guess they just maybe, I don't know, sold your immortal soul the night before and this is how you got that goal in, but that's a possibility. Not a very likely one, not one that you're probably want, uh, going to try uh, to try very often. After the goal attempt, which again is optional, you don't have to take it, there is the movement phase when the players move their their little players on the on the field. I was gonna say battlefield, and this is when formation comes into account because there are three types of movement options, and you have to take one. You can choose forward movement, then you move your number of forward players, depending on formation, directly forward, and you can move them by one or two areas. For example. In this case, I have two forwards, I can move two players forward, up to two areas. Defense, I can move the number of defenders uh, backwards, and again, I can move them, I can move them uh, up to twice as many areas as they would usually move, that is, up to two areas. In this case, I'm on the defensive side, I can move five players back up to two areas. Midfield movement, then I can move uh, players in any direction, as many as I have in my midfield area, uh, but I cannot move them to the highest or lowest possible position in a straight move. So there are restrictions there, but otherwise uh, it's a pretty flexible way of moving players. You also get an, uh, an option of a free move if you have players that are in the areas that are the closest to the sides of the pitch, then you can move them for free uh, in the opposite direction. But really your formation, your initial formation has a lot of importance when it is a matter of uh, deciding how you move your players. After that, after the players have moved, the turn is over and you move to the next turn, which starts here again. I'm sure that this felt very confusing, really broken into little bits and pieces, so let me go through the player aid once more. Now that you've had a general idea, maybe you can get a good sense of how the turn works, which is again much less complicated, it sounds like. Choose your target area when they're the controlling team, very simple. Dice rolling and time is taken into account. Control check, you see who the controlling player is at this point. The ball moves. There may or may not be a goal attempt. Players move. As you can see, when you see it like this, it really is 
Uh, you move at the end of a turn to set up your options for the following turn, that is improving your chances to retain control of the ball if you have it, improving the chances of stealing the ball if you don't have control of the ball, dice are rolled, um, time moves, this is pretty automatic, you see how your movement paid off depending on where the ball is at that point, the controlling team may attempt a goal players move to set up their tactical situation for the following turn. You play until the end of the game and at that point the player that has scored the highest amount of goals is the winner. A long time ago I remember that I read in a book about artificial intelligence and artificial human beings about the difference between mimetic realism and functional realism. When talking about robots that would be um, uh, a mimetically realistic robot is one that just looks like a human being as opposed to a functional uh, robot, human robot, would be a robot that may not look at all like a human being but functions, functions exactly like one, can think like a human being, can do the same things. Perfect robot would be one that has both and then of course we have Blade Runner come alive. Uh, this uh, digression actually uh, has a purpose, I believe, uh, because I think this distinction can be useful here. This is not a game that is mimetically realistic. Uh, you look at the board, it barely looks like a soccer field to me, um, and the rules, especially when you read the rule book, feel incredibly abstract, feel like they don't come together, they're all about numbers and things like that. Uh, but this is not the case. If you put in the patience to learn how to play the game, which is slightly different from learning just the rules, those uh, Take some work too, surprisingly for a rule book that short. But then, if you take the patient to go through the procedures and just play them, go through the motions enough times that they stop feeling clunky, well, at that point, you will see that actually this game has quite a bit to offer to a person that is looking for uh, an elegant representation of soccer because this is a game that is functionally realistic you really feel that the action is the type of action that may happen in a soccer field. Uh, if you're familiar with the game, the flow of the game, the strategies, uh, the reactions, the strategy, uh, strategies and the tactics uh, just feel right. They do feel uh, like they capture the essence of the, of, of the game of soccer, if not immediately at first sight, the appearance of the game of soccer. Uh, the game, because of this, will feel slow and very procedural at the beginning. A game may take you over two hours to complete, maybe just start with short games, uh, play a single half. But as you become familiar with the game, and so does your opponent, the game speeds up and the action becomes much more interesting and intriguing, which is the entire point. A word of warning here, though. Uh, you need to play with players that want to play in the philosophy of the game, that is to see the action develop, the teams interact, they, they want to see a certain fluid experience. If you're playing against control freaks, um, OCD players that want to maximize their modifiers and then they want to think about if I move this I'm gonna get double than that, or if I move that but then you move that I'm gonna get a plus one but I want a plus uh, plus two, then let me rethink this or that, uh, these people you're gonna jump at their throats in, in no time. They're just not the kind of people you want to play this game with. You have to be in the philosophy. The action should be fast, move your players around as they look like they should be there and maybe then one thing happens, when things happen you realize ah, I'm gonna not get the modifiers that I hope uh, I, would, I would get, which is actually what you should expect when indeed you have players that have a general plan that they, are, they have agreed uh, to. Uh, but may get distracted, something may happen, they may not uh, be able to perform an organic action as the one that, uh, that, that the player behind the strategy would want. Uh, in the case, of course, that would be the team leader, that would be whoever came up with the strategy in the real soccer field. Uh, you should have a certain degree of lack of control there uh, because you don't have such a supervisor and supervising entity in an actual soccer field as you have when you're playing this board game.
if um if slow paces are concerned my recommendation is try, try to time each turn give players a limited amount of time to uh, make their decisions about their moves people will make mistakes think will become chaotic things should become tense and you should solve that problem there but if you're playing with players that have the right uh, game philosophy uh, I don't think you're going to have any problem so uh, my two warnings are it may take a little bit for this game uh, to really take off in your experience and you need to play to with the right players but if you do so this is a fun game as I said the huge thing to me is that the game just feels right it really feels like this is soccer and it is represented in an apparently abstract way but a very economic, a very elegant way to really uh, put things together. What is sacrificed in terms of, say, a vivid visual representation of soccer is definitely made up for by the intensity of the action and the nuances that the action can create. So I like this game, I definitely enjoyed it. It took me a while to get into it, but I certainly enjoyed it. I can definitely recommend it to anyone who's interested in a a game about soccer. If you never played soccer, if you don't know how the game works, I do not know that uh, this would be the right introduction for you to the concepts of the game, but if you're willing to put in some work at the beginning, do some homework by yourself, learn about the game, and then see how it works here, then the mechanics will make sense and you will also will be able to enjoy. Overall, this is a good game. I find it to be beautifully produced. It works well, it plays well, Definitely a good game.